We'll, of course, bring you more on that story as it develops through the course of the day. With rising inflation and strained supply chains, Canada and the U.S. are facing questions about who they choose to trade with. It's an issue that was raised during the U.S. Trade Representative's first visit to Canada this week. Ambassador Catherine Tai met with her Canadian counterpart, Minister Mary Eng, and they talked, of course, about the strength of that trade relationship, but also about ongoing challenges. I spoke to Ambassador Tai on Friday from Toronto before she headed home about some of those irritants and what's next for Canada-U.S. trade. Ambassador Tai, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. I want to talk, first of all, about a couple of the trade irritants, let's call them, between Canada and the United States. As you know, there have been uh, lumber duties in place on, on Canada since 2017. There is an argument, I think, to be made that the tariffs um, are particularly damaging right now because they affect the cost of housing construction in the United States. Was there a conversation with Minister Ng about that, um, about the tariffs in this economic environment? It's a really good question. I think that the current environment is so um, uh, disruptive and uh, turbulent overall in terms of uh, our domestic economies and um, uh, the overall world economy uh, that it's important to um, uh, take a moment to reflect on the context. Um, you know, uh, I think that the softwood lumber issue uh, has been and uh, is continues to be a difficult one uh, between our economies. Uh, in terms of the uh, the price rises that we see, um, the housing costs, uh, those are issues and those are challenges uh, that are actually quite a bit larger than uh, the mm -hmm. dispute that we have um, on softwood. Uh, so, you know, it does, I think, make uh, the conversation uh, that much uh, more um, difficult right now, but and let me just take it back down to basics, which is this is about a fundamental um, uh, difference uh, between the way that uh, we treat these two industries, and um, uh, the two of us remain committed to uh, talking uh, and uh, threshing out the details um, for uh, uh, how we might be able to make some progress, but uh, it's been a thorny issue for decades. Yeah. For sure. And, and I, I do want to talk to you more about your views on tariffs and inflation, because I, I, I know that you're asked about an awful lot. But uh, just on the other thorny issue that I'm sure came up as well and has also been an issue for decades, and that is uh, dairy and supply management uh, in this country and the way we deal with that. I, I wonder whether you think Canada has backtracked on some of its commitments around loosening restrictions around dairy um, and, and what that tells you about our agreement in the, in the new NAFTA. I think, um, you know, on, on this one, um, again, um, the NAFTA um, took effect, the original one, back in 1994. And uh, we just came out of a, um, a very intensive renegotiation of the NAFTA um, and uh, the, the birth of what we call the USMCA in the United States and uh, what you call COSMA here. Mm -hmm. um, as part of that renegotiation, um, it was really a, a critical part of the vision for renewing NAFTA for many of our stakeholders in the United States and uh, a lot of members of Congress that um, uh, one of the benefits of the renewal of the NAFTA was uh, a promise by Canada to improve market access for American dairy farmers and American dairy um, um, into the Canadian market. And uh, what we've seen now in the almost two years of um, uh, USMCA's entry into force uh, is that uh, that promise has not been realized. Hmm. Um, this is a source of great frustration. Uh, dairy uh, and supply management, as you've noted, um, has also been uh, a fundamental point of contention between our economies and uh, our dairy farmers, frankly, uh, also for a couple decades. Uh, but with respect to the renewal of the NAFTA and uh, the USMCA commitments, um, uh, I will continue to champion the expectations of American dairy farmers and our members of Congress for whom this promise was critical in uh, uh, throwing their support behind the renewal of the NAFTA. Yeah, to, to talk a bit more about the tariffs, the USTR is, is expected to review, I think, the first group of uh, some $300 billion worth of tariffs um, on Chinese imports potentially as soon as this weekend. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but are you of the belief that those tariffs need to be lifted, at least in part, because of inflationary concerns, that that would actually ease inflation for, uh, for Americans and for others? This is a process. What we've announced is the beginning of the process. 
uh, so you know, uh, it is uh, it is a uh, uh, it is it is going to be a, a comprehensive review. We've put out a notice, um, and we are inviting uh, comment uh, on the question of inflation. Uh, let me say this again. Uh, what we are going through, and that's um, uh, ordinary Americans and also ordinary Canadians and mm -hmm. a lot of ordinary citizens all around the world, what we are going through right now with respect to uh, rising prices in our economies um, is painful uh, and uh, certainly um, uh, anxiety-inducing. I completely understand that. Uh, we have a lot of tools at our disposal, both um, on our own and also potentially in coordination with each other uh, to address uh, these effects, which are macroeconomic in nature. Um, in terms of what we do about um, the China tariffs that are in place, uh, that is about um, another question, which is about uh, uh, the U.S.-China trade relationship and mm -hmm. um, uh, China's place uh, in uh, the world uh, trading order and its impacts on our ability to compete effectively and our ability to uh, thrive and our industry's ability uh, to thrive uh, in competition with a system like China's. Um, whatever we do in the near term to address the pressures and the challenges that we are facing in the near term uh, cannot in my view, undermine or lock us into a path that would make us more vulnerable mm. uh, and less strong in the medium term coming out of these turbulent years. Well, well I want to talk a little bit about, I, I guess this is about China, the pandemic, and the war in Ukraine. Um, the U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said last week that um, she doesn't believe American supply chains are resilient and secure. I, I think Canada has certainly felt that over the past couple of years as well. And I wonder if the United States and Canada, and whether you've had these conversations, should be more actively looking at domestic supply chains in so-called sort of friendly countries where things are just much more reliable. Is, is that sort of where the future is, Ambassador? Look, I think, um, again, smart people are looking at the situation that we're in. Um, and in an economy like uh, the United States, um, and from what I've gathered uh, in two days of talking to smart people here in Canada, um, <laughs> there has been an erosion uh, of our respective industrial manufacturing bases. And, and that is something that does leave us vulnerable. So I think in terms of uh, building resilience, uh, we each have to look at uh, our own manufacturing capacities and ensure that there's a critical level of activity going on that allows us to adapt and to pivot when crises come up separately separately because uh, I don't think any nation is able to uh, solely produce for itself, uh, nor should that be desirable. Uh, sure. It creates its own concentration vulnerabilities. Uh, we still do need to trade. Um, both the United States and Canada are born out of trade, and uh, we have a tradition of being great trading nations. I am convinced that um, uh, both Minister Ng and I have visions for our economies uh, as leaders in trade. What we need to do is to uh, look at uh, also uh, how we are trading. Um, we need more options in uh, our trade relations uh, and in our uh, supply chains. And we also need to have more trust uh, in our options and in those supply chains. So there are a number of different levels on which we need to uh, pivot and adapt uh, through our trade policies and in coordination with other policies uh, to make our economies more resilient and to make our supply chains more resilient. Okay. Ambassador Tai, so nice of you to make the time while you're here in Canada. I appreciate it very much. Thank you so much.